Sunday morning, and uh, I guess I can call this my random fodder. Uh, as I was about to paint this, I said, you know what, let me share this with um, everybody. Uh, I think I've taken a picture of, of this before, but it's just a real easy way, um, and kind of a, a, I guess a lazy way maybe, I don't know. But it's a, it's a really good way of uh, having those really crispy uh, lines between the brick and the cement. So what I usually do is, um, it could be index cards or whatever. I have some scrap stickers from work, um, old address labels that uh, were going to get thrown out. So I grabbed them and I just, you know, pretty much cut them in half. And then I just put them along the groove that I had already made. So when I start to, uh, you know, to paint um, the brick, even if I go up against the, uh, you know, the paper, uh, it's gonna, it's gonna be fine because it's gonna block it off from going into the other color. So at the end of it, so I leave it like this until I give it the two coats of brick. I do a, a dry brush of uh, two different grays, and then um, after that's all set, I peel the cards off. Now I will say that this technique has backfired on me. If I don't let this dry enough, when I peel off this part from in between, um, you know, in, in the from the groove, from the cut groove, um, it'll pull the black paint out and you'll see pink. So you have to let this dry for um, 24 hours plus. Uh, and then so when you do this and you peel off the card, it just peels off um, clean with no problem or, you know, the paper, whatever you put in there. So yeah, so I just wanted to share that, man. That's, you know, I, I think a lot of uh, the reason or one of the reasons that uh, my dials look decent is because of the paint job. And um, this is one of the techniques that I use. And it allows me to paint quicker and I don't have to, you know, obviously if I didn't have these on, then I'd have to be real careful around the borders. Uh, and if I go over, um, that brick color, um, uh, doesn't cover much. It's a thin, it's a thin layer. So if I go over and then I'd have to come back with the gray. So it's just a lot of cutting. So this eliminates that. Um, so I definitely wanted to share that. Um, I've always, I've, Collect the mini mates for a while, man. This isn't, uh, I know mini mates is, seems like everybody's back on mini mates these days, but you know, I have a pretty cool collection, uh, and I have some other ones that aren't pictured here. So, um, the homie Bob Joint is actually making a custom Al Figures mini mate. <laughs> Yo, I'm amped up to see this thing. He showed me some, some, um, shots already, and it's gonna be cool because I'm what actually what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have Al Figures, you know, kick him butt, you know, because. That's really the only world I can probably do that in is the Marvel Universe, you know, because I'm controlling it. So that's what's up. Um, so then, you know, I had some, as always, people have scrap um, foam boards. So I said, let me make a little uh, a little corner for these guys. So I'm going to throw like a door and um, beat it up a little bit and just give it a, a scene for them so I can take a couple shots of them. I think that's probably one of the reasons I don't take many shots of my mini mates is because I have nothing to put them... Uh, on you know what I mean and everything I do is for the six inch figure so I figured I uh, work on that not no rush just a little side job that I'm doing um, obviously if you guys know Century Productions this um, this is for him he wanted something uh, for his review as a background so I was able to rock out his logo um, using foam uh, the project foam board um, and so hopefully He'll like that, but uh, once it gets painted in gray, it's going to look like it's just part of the stonework, which is going to be pretty dope. Um, so I'm kind of amped up to finish this one. And then um, the massive one, son. This one's crazy, crazy big, 30 inches tall. Uh, but I'm doing a, um, I'm doing a side video on this one, so I won't, I won't focus on it too much. But yeah, man, just wanted to share a little bit of my um, Sunday morning uh shenanigans you know just uh finishing some stuff up the only thing i gotta do with that is finish the um the floor that's there for the um rooftops so i'll do that today in terms of raw paint um and then i just have to uh airbrush it so what i'm gonna do is finish this today so that um i can airbrush this tomorrow seal it uh deal same deal with this one and it'll be ready to ship tuesday i wanted to try to have it ready to ship by saturday but i just didn't want to cut any corner so there's a couple things i still need to do um but anyway again i, I don't want to show that one too much just because i have another video with that one so that was it man this is my um my sunday morning uh fun time so i got to pick up my son in a couple hours so in the meantime i'll work a little bit um give this one that first coat and then uh uh you know maybe work on this one a little bit as i'm finishing that floor so 
Good times, y'all. So this is uh, going to be the last part of uh, of this diorama, um, this diorama's video. Uh, so this was done. This was done um, for Jose in New York, and uh, he wanted a rooftop. Um, you know, and the challenge that I had with creating another rooftop is that the only type of rooftop I know how to make is the one that I made for for Russell over in Australia. So I never want to duplicate. Um, rooftops and even just something as simple as changing the window placement to me that's still I mean, the structure is the structure if the structure is the same it's duplicating and I just don't want to don't want to do that so um, it's always going to be a challenge when I get asked to do something that I've done before and I, I need to change it up so in this case what I did is um, it's definitely a smaller um, top than Russell had probably a little bit longer but it's still a good space um, man, I don't, I just put my ruler away. Um, I don't know, man, maybe it's a foot across, I would say, maybe. Uh, but yeah, so, it's good space. I mean, you can put a couple action figures here. It's, it's, it's uh, definitely good space. And, uh, so I did the rooftop and I just decided to have it overlook, you know, the side of what could be a, a, a residence, the back entrance of a residence or a, a, even a business, you know, so I kind of made it look like it's a parking lot actually just painted the um, cement um, uh, pieces that go here so that cars don't go onto the sidewalk uh, went with the different again I explained a lot of this already but just um, I don't remember what I explained ha, so uh, you know different door a different window I actually got this from Jack over in California it's different in that it's definitely a lot more uh, slimmed down than the ones I usually use the ones I usually pick up at my art store um, so yeah, this is it, man. And that here at its peak, it's about almost 30 inches tall from, from the surface or from wherever you're putting it. 29, obviously, because of uh, street, from the street level of the dial. So 29 inches tall, um, you know, two feet across. So it's a, it's a good size, you know, diorama. So I'm definitely, definitely happy, uh, excuse me, how, how it came out. So um, I was asked to maybe uh, give a little more detail uh, on the airbrush and, and kind of how uh i use it or or what i use or you know just that quick background and all i can give you is my knowledge um i don't i'm I, i'm not an airbrush artist by any stretch of the imagination man i'm not nearly as good as uh i'm not even good i mean i'm, I'm horrible at it um and this is what i mean i mean i have a cousin who uh, my cousin lito um who's a great artist and actually his brother danny um my cousins both my cousins are really good um really good artist so when we were younger he was into airbrushing so he had magazines just laying around the you know the crib and i'd go through them and so um I, I learned some tips from him and i tried out but i didn't have that that hand that hand control that you need that hand eye coordination um airbrush control uh, so i never never stuck to it but if i i ended up getting an airbrush do uh, man i i almost want to say 10 years ago i could be wrong if there's any experts that know anything about airbrush and this looks like an old model or what have you, then, you know, let me know. Because it, it's, it was, you know, at least five years. It was at an art store called, um, used to be in, in uh, near Harvard Square uh, in Cambridge, Massachusetts. And it was, it's, um, oh, what's that? Pearl, Pearl. And Pearl was the dopest art store in, 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 in the state, to be honest with you. That, that Pearl's closed down now, but it was an amazing, it was like, three or four floors of supplies and all art you know so um i had guy and i think a, a gift card or i had a coupon or something um and and so i ended up getting this airbrush gun um which is uh let me see, let me see a vega 2000 model um and it, i don't i remember it wasn't it wasn't cheap i remember it being like a hundred bucks if not more and i either had a coupon or or something where I think I only came out of pocket like 50 bucks. So I had this for years and years and I never really did anything with it. Um, I had gotten some sneakers and I uh, I did a couple designs. Um, you know what? I think on top of the fridge is where I saw them last. I wonder. Oh yeah, here you go. So I did this for my son before, which is basically those are just white on white Air Forces and, and uh, kind of did a fade blue and then um, a Puerto Rican flag. But all this was done... Um, with tape you know what i mean so i just taped out the section i didn't want to paint and airbrushed the section that i wanted to paint 
So obviously, it takes no skill to do that. I mean, you're gonna have this, you know, the skill to line it up right, whatever. But that I'm not talking about in terms of airbrushing, no skill whatsoever. Then I took this side and the same thing with like a fade. So I would just tape this out. So that's about my experience um, in airbrushing. So when the whole diorama thing came about. Um, I remember just thinking, man, I have my airbrush, um, but my compressor, which is just a small regular compressor, nothing fancy, was at a friend's house. And so I finally picked it up, grabbed it, so I have my old school compressor, but it works just fine, and attached my, um, you know, my airbrush gun to it. Uh, I had some black, but I went and got some more because I, I figured the, the stuff I had must have been so old. I mean, literally, man, the, the shoes you saw, my son's 16, he, my son's like a size 9 or 10 or something like that. He's 16, so that's when he was a little, so it was years ago. Um, so I just got this stuff. And so, uh, basically, um, what I do is, you know, it comes with this little, uh, this little cup that you load up with the paint, attach it to the gun. And when you press on the trigger of the gun, um, it determines, uh, how much, uh, spray is coming out. So there's that little button. So when you press it down, it's just air. And as you're pushing it back, it's starting to release, um, release the paint little by little so obviously if you give it a full blast it's just gonna be like whew. but if you just get a real you know you can kind of get and you're letting less pressure in and the paint coming out is how you get those skinny lines that i, I again i have no skill at them uh at all for the most part all i'm doing when i use this is just um you know just throwing the mist of black you know and and so that you can you can in certain areas got to be a little thinner in that you don't want it to blotch out or come out as rapidly so i might just do you know in that little corner i may just do like a um like a thin blast and just kind of give it the the motion and you can kind of see the black landing on there um so yeah so this is what i use and uh you know compress i was gonna get a new compressor because again mine is it just looks you know older and i just wanted to get a new one but they're pretty expensive man they you know a good compressor is going to probably start you off around 75 bucks and, and up and then an, a good airbrush gun is probably going to be around the same price i mean um i've seen other stuff on the market um but but this is what i have so i haven't tried anything else uh yeah man so i just wanted to give that quick um that quick info on on the whole airbrushing um part of it you know, dry brushing is still a, a, a dope finish to me because I still use it for a lot of things. But that airbrush gun gives it another uh, another level. And the thing is, again, I suck at it. I'm, dude, dude, JD, if JD was to put his airbrushing skills and just put it together with his dioramas, he'd blow everybody out the water. I mean, it would be insane the kind of detail he'd be able to grab um, because he is, um, you know, he's an experienced um, airbrush artist. So... You know, I, I'm, I'm horrible. So, you know, what I get is 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 uh, is that. Um, but, yeah, okay, so before I, I stop recording on this, because I do want to stop recording, we'll get into the 10-minute mark. Um, that uh, diorama in the back was done for Century Productions. Um, he hit me up a couple weeks ago uh, and was looking for something uh, for his reviews. And so he originally wanted um, something that was, like, you know, graffiti-based and... Um, you know, I'm assuming he saw the slings, uh, diorama and probably, you know, really liked the way that wall came out, which, you know, I thought it came out pretty dope. Just all the tags that were mixed together. Um, so he, that was his first idea. And it is, as I started building this, um, this dial, um, you know, he didn't want tags. So that's why I have more gray than brick is because I was prepared to tag this up. And then what I did is this here is his logo. He, he just sent me a copy of his, you know, a logo. He JPEG me his logo. I printed it out, sized it out, and then basically put it on a, on a thin, thinner piece of foam board and traced it out with a blade. And that's pretty much all it was, is once you trace it out with the blade, you pop out the inside, glue it in, you paint it all together, and it looks like it's part of that concrete structure. Um, you know, so nothing super, super duper fancy, but definitely clean. Um, and, and Sentry decided to not have put, you know, for me to not put graffiti, um, on the back. So he's just going to go with this here. So this is what you're going to see for his reviews, uh, at some point. Um, and it definitely think it's a real nice, clean look for, um, for action figure reviews. So, I right, y'all. Peace.